it's time. It's finally time. A couple months ago, probably more than that, somebody asked me to, to do a 3D puff in ink stitch. And then real life happened. I forgot. Got reminded. Asked my wife to order some 3D puff foam. It has arrived. So now it's time. This video is going to be a little different. A little different in the fact that I usually experiment and figure out, as far as I can tell, the best way to do something. Make a video and pass along that information to you. In this video, I'm going to be experimenting in this video. I've been researching on how to do 3D puff, and I have these nine little hints and tips and tricks and rules to go by. So we're going to, in this video, make a 3D puff design, and then we're going to stitch it out and see how it goes. And at the end, if there's something different that I would have done, I'll discuss it at that, at that point. Following these rules right here should get us pretty close. We'll see. So in this video, I'm experimenting and I'm taking you guys along for the ride. So here we go. Number one, must be a satin stitch. That should be obvious. Uh, not too narrow of a satin stitch. The, the width of your satin stitch is going to dictate how much foam puff that you can put in there. You have a really wide satin stitch, you can put more of a thickness of puff inside there. If it's narrow, you're not going to be able to put as much puff inside. And just because it's wide doesn't mean you have to put more puff, but you can. You must increase the density. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Uh, but we're looking for a point two in the density area. Underlay. I got a question mark on the underlay because I've seen different people say they do different underlay when doing a 3D puff. I would definitely say do not do a zigzag. Probably don't want to do a center line. If you feel like you have to do a, an underlay, do the around the outside underlay. And I can't, the name escapes me right at the moment. But I'm not going to use any underlay. Some people don't use underlay, but they use a tack down stitch inside of whatever they're 3d puffing i'm not going to do that either we're going to run a, a no underlay satin stitch with the 3d puff foam sitting on top of it once it stitches a few times i'm going to let it go use the same color thread as foam this is actually really important because no matter pretty much no matter how dense you get that uh, satin stitch you're going to have some of that puff showing through so if your if your thread color is the same as your foam color, it's not going to be anywhere near as obvious. Close the ends. This is not a rule, but it is something that I have figured out by watching a lot of things about 3D puff. It is strongly suggested. When you do a satin stitch, the top of the satin stitch is open, and you could actually stick something down in there. And the, when you put the foam in there, that foam is going to be sticking out the top of that. When you tear it away, it could pull on it. It doesn't have to be completely closed off, but you want to kind of round off the ends. We'll look at that. Do your puff piece last. If you're doing anything around a 3D puff, do all that stuff around it first. Do your 3D puff foam insert last. If possible, slow your machine down. The, the machine I'm going to test this on is a flatbed. I don't know if I can slow it down or not. I, I don't remember. We'll look at it when we get out there. And at the end, apply a little bit of heat. Either a flame. Don't kiss the flame to your finished product. But you want to get it close so that it shrinks down the edges of that 3D puff. Where it's trying to stick out through. And you just want to... You're, all you're doing is trying to get it to relax is a good way to say it. Not go away. You just want it to relax. Uh, flame or heat gun, either one. Those work pretty good. We'll flip over to ink stitch and I'm going to make a number one dad stitch. Uh, I went through the extensions lettering, the ink stitch lettering. 
I couldn't find a good pound sign and a numbers indicator, so I'm going to make one real quick. I'm going to do a number one dad, and I'm just going to make a straight line. Didn't do that right. Let's try that again. Straight line. That's better. We're going to go into stroke style. We're going to make that three millimeters wide. Should be pretty good. Yeah, probably. Go to extensions, ink stitch, uh, satin tools, convert line to satin. Okay, that's kind of strange. Huh. That's interesting. It's probably fine, but I don't like it. I'm going to make it a I'm going to pull this one down. And then I'm going to make this one a little bit straighter than what it is. Turn off that. And we want it straight across. Not going to let me go straight across. Okay, that looks better. Now I'm going to duplicate that. Hit control so it goes straight over. Excellent. Excellent. Hit control D again to duplicate. We're going to flop it on its side. Pull it up here. Going to duplicate it again. Hit control button and scroll it straight down. We now have a numbers symbol. Let's hang in and let's see how that looks. Just going to do a quick params. Yep, that'll work for now. Uh, not getting too fancy about, about cutting stitches and all that. We're, we're playing around. This is a little journey. It's a little, just a wee little journey. Uh, I want to move that over just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to move this one over just a little bit. Somewhat in line with that one. Okay, that looks a little more square. Somewhat. Uh, we're going to do the 3D puff last. So the number one's, the, the one is going to be my 3D puff. So we're going to go ahead and do a real quick, throwing in a dad. And we'll just use the lettering, ink stitch lettering for this. We're going to do a, we'll do a, and no, we're going to do a, let's do a Romana, Romana, Ro, Roman Agusa. Why oh, have trouble saying that? Number one, dad. Hit apply. Grab that, drag it down, go to my layers, open up that ink stitch. I'm going to select the D. I'm going to bring that up here. Somewhere there. Select the A. Bring that up here. And the D going up at that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we need a one. Let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to go through ink stitch. And see if there is a lettering that I like for number one. Number one. Uh, needs to be something fairly fat. See what a master's looks like. Uh, directors. I can work with directors. We're going to drag that down. We're going to make it much bigger. We're going to make it a whole lot bigger. Now, I want to see... How big that is actually from one to the other. 14 millimeters. That seems like a lot. I really don't know for sure. That seems like a lot. So if I select that number one, I want to see what Rams looks like. I might shrink that 14 millimeters down a little bit. It seems like it's a little excessive. And 
So what we mean by closing off the ends, this is an end that we would close off, and this is an end that we would close off. That's probably not as bad. This is an end we close off. Uh, I'm going to modify that slightly. I'm going to take this one a little bit closer to the other one. I'm going to hit my control so that it goes straight up. Now let's see how far we are. Eleven millimeters. Okay, I don't know. I said you're you're coming along with you're coming along for this joy ride with me, so I don't know. Honestly, don't know. Which means I need to make this one a little bit smaller too. Hit that button, and we're gonna hit that button. Gonna scroll in, and we're gonna move that over a little bit. This seems a little a little fat. Okay. And I may have to move that over. That's probably okay. We're going to leave that as is. So to close the ends, uh, I'm going to move this number sign down a little bit. Now to close the ends, I'm going to hit that, grab that one and that one, and put one in the middle. So we're going to drag this one over about where that one is. We're going to bring this one up. And then we're going to bring this one down. So that they sort of kind of meet in the middle. And going to... That one's way over there. Bring this one over and this one over. I don't want to necessarily close it. I just want it to be a little closer. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm trying to do the same thing that they already did on that one. That's all. And then I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to pull them down ever so slightly. Because that way this bottom row is going to over stitch over the top of that open column. It'll close it off. We don't have to worry about that. So on this one. Actually, we want all these, and we're going to just go ahead and add several points. And we'll pull this out. I'm going to pull this out and down. It should look pretty good when I get done. Like that. And then I'm going to pull this one the other way and up. And that's too far. So make it look kind of like the other one in reverse. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Go to extensions, go to ink stitch and params. Oh yeah, that works. That works pretty good. Um, this is, because this is stitched by the number of points, so we need to move this over so that that one lines up with that one, that one lines up with that one, that one's going to line up with that one. Now it will look better. Select the whole thing, go back to params, and we're going to increase that density I was talking about. The density for ink stitch is this zigzag spacing peak to peak. That's your density. 0.4 is the default and that gives us 910 stitches. We're going to change that to 0.2, which gives us 1568 stitches. And you can see how much denser that is. A lot denser. It only has a contour underlay, the one that goes around the outside, around the outside. So I'm going to turn off the underlay. Now you see that there is no underlay. Much better. That little jump stitch right there won't hurt a thing. We should be ready. Maybe. Let's see what the whole thing looks like.
Now, right here, we'd put that piece of foam in so it could do the, the foam stitching. We're going to go do that. Uh, not very cohesive, is it? Let's make it a little bit more cohesive. Let's click that. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're going to we're going to move that number one down a little bit, and then on the dad, we're going to make that just a little smaller and move it up in the process. Just about like that. I think that'll look a little better. This is going to be on a just a test piece of fabric, so non-production. We're playing around. We're just having fun, and I'm going to change colors to doing it on the flatbed. I don't I want to make sure that it stops in between each section, especially when it's time to put that piece of foam down. So the the best trick to get a flatbed to stop is to change the color. So we're going to select. The numbers sign is going to be a color. Doesn't matter. That's how you, you to change the color of a satin stitch. Push the shift button and then select the color. And then same thing for the dad and shift click a color. Same thing with the number. I'm going to shift click, which it's already a different color. It's black. So I'll just leave it at that. I don't even know what color foam I have out there. So the color foam I have out there is going to dictate what color thread that is. So we're going to save this file, save as. Buff, we're going to save as buff SVG. Always, always save your piece as an SVG before you save it as your embroidery file. Because if you want to make changes to it, Super easy to make changes to your .svg. Not so easy to make changes to a .dst or a .pes or what have you. So that's done. I'm going to throw that onto the trusty old USB stick. Our puff, grab it, copy, removable media. Paste one file. There it is. Safely remove. And follow me. So I now welcome you to our super secret embroidery bunker. And I have that file fired up on our little machine. And I have black 2 millimeter, And I have white 3 millimeter. I don't want to stitch white thread on a white foam on a white test fabric. So I'm going with the black two millimeter and we'll see how it goes. So we are back. I have the black thread in place. So I'm going to put my puff foam in place. I'm going to set the foot pad down. I'm going to hold this in place and then we're going to click go and we're going to see how it goes. Now that it has a few stitches in place, I'm going to let go and let it do its thing. Thank you. 
All right. Yank that thing out of there. Gonna need two hands. Be right back. Okay, this is where the magic happens because that's supposed to be able to rip away, right? Nice and easy. And it is. Oh, looky there, looky there. That looks pretty good. A little hard to tell the puff in the video. I expect that. However, it does look pretty good. It's a nice raised up ridge. Not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm going to take a picture of this, put it on the big screen for you. I'm heading back to the computer. So for a first time puff, I think it turned out pretty well. And a couple of pictures. This first picture is I lifted it up, trying to get an angle to where you can see that it is a puff. It is raised up a little bit. Uh, next time I do it, I'm either going to make the satin stitch less wide or leave it at that width and put two layers of two millimeter underneath it to make it even higher raised up. But other than that, first time go, I think it went reasonably well. Thanks for watching.